want to talk to you about how to rank websites, specifically how to get website traffic. It's the probably the number one thing that I see entrepreneurs, online digital marketers, online uh, business owners trying to do but falling short. So what I'm about to show you is literally what to do on your page. This is co technically called on-page SEO, okay? And this training video is all about showing you exactly what Google is looking for when it comes to ranking your website and showing up when people go and search for particular things um, that they need help with. Now, one thing that I'm skipping and not covering in this video that I will cover in a separate video is what we call keyword research. And keyword research is simply um, you utilizing tools or even free tools that Google provides like Keyword Planner uh, and researching the volume and competitiveness of particular keywords that your audience is searching for. Um, one of the best traffic pieces of traffic coaching advice I've ever received is to simply stand in oncoming traffic. Uh, that is to say, if someone's Googling or searching on Yahoo or searching on Bing a thousand times a month for a particular keyword in your industry, in your vertical, then you should be there when they type in those search results, also known as search engine result pages. You need to be one of those SERPs that shows up and obviously you're very clickable and that's how page views happen and that's how website traffic happens. But we're not talking about keyword research. We're talking about the moment when they actually show up to your website. Why did Google prefer your website over someone else's? And so we're going to talk about what we call on-page SEO. Now, what I want you to do is to pretend that I'm about to draw your web page, okay? And there's going to be several points of interest that I uh, lay out here in this short training. And I'm going to make some notes as I go so that you can keep up and also take notes yourself. And obviously, you can uh, rewind or watch this video again if you need uh, further assistance. But basically, there's about eight different things that Google's looking for on your website. Number one... what we call the H1 or the headline. Google has what we call spiders or bots or an algorithm, artificial intelligence, scouring the internet looking for the following elements. So I'm going to go pretty quickly so that uh, you can take action fast. But your headline needs to contain the keyword. Okay, or keyword phrase. Very, very important. All right. Uh, also, uh, this is really great for a blogging environment. You can also do this on your um, on your actual homepage or whatever that might be. But blogging, what I'm, the example I'm about to show you is a great blogging strategy. Okay. Then I always like to use a great hero image, okay? Uh, images are huge to Google. I like to use at least two or three images. Um, make sure they're not large file sizes. Two or three images. Make sure that the file name and the alt tags, okay, the ALT tags, and the actual file before you upload it on the computer have the keywords in them, okay? So we're going to talk about file names and alt tags. Whether you're using WordPress, Squarespace, Weebly, there's always a place in the page editor, in the upload editor, where you can actually change the alt tags to represent the file name of the image. They all need to be unique, but also containing the keywords. So your file name might be keyword-oceanview dash sunset. The next one might be keyword dash mountain view dash sunrise. 
and showing Google that you're providing variety. Google wants to know that you are providing a wealth of knowledge, um, gold to the reader, and dynamic, non-redundant content, okay? So they want the unique visitor experience to be awesome. So that's why we need to focus on these dynamic pieces of information. So you've got the image and images that you can pepper throughout the rest of the blog post, right? Um, now, we also have the H2 headline. This is the uh, what some would call a paragraph header, okay? And there's going to be several of these above each paragraph that represent the different sections of your blog. These are important to also contain the keyword. Okay? So this might be keyword about the keyword price or how to use keyword in the best way for your X business. These are the headers that tell you about the following paragraphs. Also, when it comes to the first sentence of the entire blog post, we want to use the keyword in the first sentence, and we want to bold and italicize. Bold and italicize the keyword in the first sentence of the entire blog, in the copy itself, right there, okay? Um, also, we want to involve a YouTube video, if at all costs, or if at all possible. Google owns YouTube. They value video content, and because they own YouTube, a YouTube embed of a video with the keyword in the title. So in a perfect world, you create your own video commentary to go along with the blog post. Even use your blog post as almost your script, or at least a rough script, that you can use in this. Now, I also have a different training video on how to rank YouTube videos. You want to follow that protocol when uh, uploading a YouTube video and then using it inside of the blog post because their YouTube has its own set of valuable uh, steps that it prioritizes when you're trying to rank a YouTube video. So if you have a YouTube video that's also optimized, that's a big deal. Also, if your blog has uh, the capability to have tags, use all of the keywords necessary in your tags, okay? Also, don't forget about your actual site metadata. This is usually inside your page editor or your site editor where you can actually um, insert keywords and page descriptions that would show up in um, inside of the Google search uh, right under the blue letters. And having the keywords in your search, uh, in your site description, allows the visitor to actually read that and maybe click on yours rather than another SERP, okay? So that's an important piece to this entire puzzle, is making sure that your, key, your metadata is optimized for your keyword. Now, I hope this is all making sense. Headlines, uh, images with keywords in it, the H2 headers with the keywords in it, um, Having multiple images is a big deal. Tags in your blog post, the YouTube video that helps you, that, that is embedded uh, from YouTube that is optimized by your, with your keywords. Having the keyword uh, emboldened and, and italicized is a massive, massive thing 
uh, believe it or not, okay? Um, <clears throat> you wanna be careful of keyword stuffing. You don't want to use your keyword over and over and over and over and over and over again, every other word, every other sentence. The, uh, Google also loves semantics. So if you're trying to rank for a particular word, it's actually in your best interest to use other words in the industry maybe that sound like or also are um, re replacement words for your particular keyword. For example, a lot of times I rank for sales funnels, but I can also say marketing funnels. Those are interchangeable in the eyes of Google, and a lot of times that content matters. Some other things that are uh, good best practices. Um, we also have external and internal links. Why is this important? Well, don't overdo it on the external links. In, uh, in your copy, maybe have one or two external links, again, to relevant keyword um, content in a, an outside authoritative um, blog or website, okay? Another domain that is authoritative in your keyword space. But also link to your other content, okay? And this is a, a great example of why it's important to produce consistent content because Google wants to know that you have the ability to offer a treasure chest of content, that your, your knowledge base, the, the breadth and the depth of your knowledge around a particular topic is sufficient for your audience and that they can travel into other pages of your blog and find more and more good stuff. At the end of the day, Google simply wants to make sure that their reader, that their user, keeps using Google. So by you providing a unique, dynamic, interlinked, and highlighted information and best practices like this diagram on the board, that's huge to Google and ultimately they will reward you with higher rankings up the search engine result pages, okay? Hope this was helpful. I'm gonna step out of the way and let you maybe screenshot the diagram behind me um, and review that and also know that in a following training video, I wanna talk about off-site rather than, or off-page SEO rather than the on-page SEO that I've covered here in this video today, all right? Josh Rhodes, Groovy Marketing. Hope this was super helpful. I'm gonna step away before I finish the uh, video so that you can screenshot, take notes, etc. Thanks.